Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody is doing well out there. Uh, whether you're an application or website developer, or you're just looking for a bit of added security uh, when you're browsing the internet, running Firefox in a Docker container may be the solution you didn't know that you were looking for. YourCDKey.com is a great place to get Windows 10 keys at incredibly low prices. So here we are on the Microsoft Windows 10 Pro page. And right here, you can see the current price is $20.05. But if you use the coupon code that's in the description down below, you'll get it even cheaper. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in here and click apply. And now our new total for Windows 10 Pro is about 15 bucks. Now I have the option to go ahead and view the keys right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Then I'll click on get the key. And then I'm gonna come over here and right there you can change the product key. So go ahead and click on that. I'm gonna go ahead and change the product key right here. So I've entered my key and I'll click next. Then I'll click on activate. And here we can see that Windows is activated. Next, what we want to do is go ahead and validate the key installation. And right there, you can see that Windows 10 Professional Edition is permanently activated. So head on over to yourcdkey.com to get your next Windows 10 Pro key at ridiculously low prices. As Ajit uh, references here in this article, um, he says that the fact that browser testing can be a pain for the most seasoned testers, but it can be even more challenging for new developers. And uh, that's absolutely true. Uh, years and years and years ago, before I did YouTube and all of this, I was a website developer and testing between browsers was a nightmare. Uh, browsers change regularly and that sort of thing. And of course, even between different browsers, things are rendered differently. And that can be very, very frustrating. So uh, from this perspective, having a standardized browser to test in and Docker might be a solution that a developer might enjoy using. In this article over on LinkedIn, Ivan talks about uh, using it to the nth degree for online security. Where here he says, if I want to surf on the Tor network um, because he wants to browse websites there, he starts a container and only accesses those sites from there. If he needs to access his bank, he starts a new container and only accesses his bank from that one. And, and that just kind of goes on with each of the different tasks uh, that he might uh, want to keep separate from one another. So. What he's done here is basically started a new container uh, to keep all of his browsing activity separate so that uh, there's there's little to no chance of uh, one thing taking over another or or maybe there's uh, maybe there's the potential to pick up a virus or malware or something like that. Uh, it can be containerized and hopefully uh, completely segregated from the rest of the system through a Docker container. So in this video, I want to take just a couple of minutes to show uh, a couple of different ways that you can deploy a Firefox Docker container. Uh, the first First way would just be a standard install uh, where there's uh, everything is just open and easy to use. Of course, they're both really open and easy to use. But uh, the second version that I want to show is actually how to connect to a gluten VPN container to have all of your data encrypted uh, from your system across the internet and back. Okay, so here we are over on uh, my GitHub uh, GIST or GIST page uh, where I've got a container set up and ready to go uh, using Linux servers Firefox install. Uh, so basically what we're saying here is it's version 2.1. We're going to have this in a volume. Uh, you don't necessarily have to use volumes, but sometimes it's just easier, uh, especially for the sake of using this on something like a Synology. Volumes really do make things a ton easier for permissions and that sort of thing. Uh, below that, of course, we've got our services. That's going to be Firefox. Again, we're going to use the Linux server Firefox. Container name will be Firefox because we're going to deploy this uh, using a stack. Of course, we're going to do this in Portainer. So that line's not really necessary. Uh, below that, we've got uh, our environmental variables for a user ID and a group ID. Uh, I've covered this quite a bit in the past, but uh, just a quick uh, refresher on that. I'm going to pop open uh, a terminal here. Uh, I'm going to just SSH into uh, my uh, Synology device. Uh, my username for that is dbtech, and my server at, uh, name is Jarvis, like so. And I'll put in my password. And then because you can see that my username is dbtech, uh, all I've got to do to get my UID and PIG is to ID dbtech, like so. And right there, uh, 1026 and 100. Uh, so 1026 and 100. Accordingly, I've got my time zone down there as, for, as well as the volume uh, that we declared up here. Uh, below that, we've got ports. Uh, port, uh, by default, this was uh, 3000, uh, like, oops, like so. Oh man, like so, um, but, I didn't want to use 3000, so I'm going to change this to 3456. Below that, they're just saying, hey, the shared memory size, allow it to be one gigabyte. And below that, restart unless stopped. Pretty standard stuff. Uh, so what I'm going to do is copy this and jump over here to Portainer. Uh, this is in Jarvis, my, my Synology device. So I'm going to go ahead and open Stacks. 
I'm going to create a new stack and I'm going to paste this in here. Uh, and of course, I'm going to give it a, um, just a name for the uh, for the container here. And basically, that's all we need to do in order to do this. We can scroll down here and click on deploy the stack. We'll give this a second to do its thing here. And then here we go. Now we're, we've got this uh, stack listed there and we've got Firefox up and running, it looks like. So if I click on uh, publish ports right over here, uh, we'll give this just a second to do what it needs to do. And there we go. So uh, let's just do, uh, let's just click Facebook and see. All right, so we do have an internet connection. So uh, what I wanna do here um, is just do, uh, let's go to uh, fast, oops, you know what, let's do this. Let's do a uh, speed test like so. Close that other tab there. Now, of course, I'm gonna have to block my IP address right there, um, but it's there and we can see where I'm connecting. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and click on go. An 11 millisecond ping. And uh, so I've got about a one gig connection. I average about 900 megs. So that's about what I'm getting across this test. So overall, I'd say this is a pretty good connection. Now, what's cool about doing it this way is that um, unless somebody has installed a keylogger uh, on your host computer, at this point, there's basically uh, no uh, association of you to this container. So if you wanted to browse even more privately without getting into VPNs, this might be another way uh, to keep uh, search history from showing up on your main machine. So here we go, about 870 uh, down and 41 and a half up. Uh, pretty good, I'm pretty happy with that. But again, what's great about this is no matter where I go in this container, uh, on, on the uh, Docker container, it won't ever show up in my host uh, browser search history. So just kind of a little thing there that you can do. Again, because we're keeping everything uh, pretty standardized here for doing testing and things like that, this is another great option. Okay, so let's go ahead and close uh, that window. And uh, let's go ahead and actually uh, shut down uh, this uh, uh, this container. I'm just going to go ahead and click on remove. I don't want that one anymore. Uh, that was just a quick demo to show that it works. Um, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and automatically remove non-persistent volumes and click remove. All right. So now we have um, our, we can actually go back to our stack here um, or we can create a new one. Let's, let's create a new one. We've got Firefox right there. So let's add a new stack and let's go over here and take a look at this. Now this one, I actually wanna show this whole thing. It'd be easier to show it over here. So here I've got again, uh, version 2.1, volume Firefox, service Firefox, same image, uh, same container name, same UID, same PIG or PGID, time zone's the same. Uh, volumes again the same where it changes is right here on line 17 where it says network mode we didn't have that before and basically what we're saying uh is we're actually replacing the ports you'll notice that ports 3000 aren't isn't there anymore so we've gone ahead and changed that with network mode and here we're saying our network is going to be a container and the container we're going to connect to is gluten now i showed in a previous video months ago how to set up gluten i've actually been running it since i made that video uh works really well on my system so uh, that's what i'm using for the sake of this but if you had a different container uh maybe you're using uh, a pia vpn container or something like that that's that's uh different from what i'm using uh, you could just put in that container name right there now the other thing that we want to do before we actually go this far is we want to come back over to our containers. We want to go find our, our VPN container. Again, I'm going to use gluten. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to duplicate and edit. Now at this time uh, here in Portainer, what I'm going to do is publish a new network port. Now, I'm going to use the same ports on this container that I used on my previous Firefox instance of three, four, five, six, and 3000. That 3000 is that internal port. So once we've got that, we can go ahead and click on deploy the container and click replace, and we'll give this a second to deploy. All right, so now gluten is starting, um, and let's go ahead and open this up so we can kind of get an idea of what's going on. Right here, my VPN routing IP address, uh, right there is 191.96.67.156. Again, this is my VPN, this isn't my actual home IP address. So now I can come back over here to uh, Firefox uh, after we give that container a name. And, and again, the only thing we changed was we removed the ports and we added this network mode. So we'll scroll down, click on deploy. Oops. Oh, you know what? I lied. That's the problem. Let's make it Firefox VPN. That's what the problem is. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and click on deploy the stack. There we go. Now we're not getting that error message. So now we've got Firefox. Let's actually switch this 
to be 25. And right here is Firefox VPN. Now you'll notice that there aren't any ports here uh, because we moved those over to um, over to our gluten uh, container over here. So right here we've got three, four, five, six. So let's go ahead and open that. We'll give this just a second. We can tell that it's working. There's a little arrow over here. There we go. So uh, again, let's go ahead and close that other tab. Let's do a speed test again, like we did a moment ago. So we'll go ahead and click on go there. Now this is a different IP address. Uh, I will I will make sure that you can tell the difference between the two. Uh, also, you can see that uh, we're on host one plus uh, in Conroe, Texas. So let's go ahead and click on go there and see what our speeds look like. Okay, so our ping suffered a little, but that's VPNs for you, that's gonna happen. But even still, we're still getting 150, 160, almost 170 megs down, uh, running our tests through, uh, through a VPN, uh, no, through a Firefox container connected to a gluten VPN container. So let's give this just another second to finish the uploads. This one should pretty much saturate if things go well. Okay, well, so here we can see that we are uh, finishing that upload. Uh, we're not getting the full 40, but we are getting, you know, 10, which still isn't too terribly bad, considering that we're connected to a VPN. So guys, there you go. There's how to set up uh, Firefox in a Docker container just for casual browsing or additional security. Uh, but if you wanted to take it another step further and connect to a VPN uh, and run all your traffic through that, you could do that as well. I will try to remember to leave uh, a link to that VPN, that gluten uh, container video down in the description below. So definitely check that out. But I think with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.